Hey Internet! So this week I've been playing Assassin's Creed Brotherhood, which is the sequel to Assassin's Creed 2, uh, which I didn't play. I played the first Assassin's Creed and I thought it had really good potential, but ultimately was crap. And that's pretty much what most people thought. It, you know, it was repetitive and, you know, it just kind of the same stuff. And I never beat it because it was, oh, I don't, I didn't care anymore. But Assassin's Creed 2 apparently fixed a lot of that stuff, but I never got a chance to play it. So here comes Assassin's Creed Brotherhood, uh, the third game in the series, only a you know, really short interval from the last one, and it, it takes place, it's like a direct sequel uh, to the storyline, uh, and it adds things like multiplayer. But is that enough? Has it even changed since the first one? Well, here's my opinion of Assassin's Creed Brotherhood. As I just mentioned, I didn't play Assassin's Creed 2, so I'm probably going to say, wow, look at all this new stuff that a lot of you are like, it's the same game as Assassin's Creed 2. Why won't you just say it's all repetitive? It's the same thing. Ugh. All I can really say is, it's new to me, so, uh, the story for Assassin's Creed Brotherhood picks up what I assume is right at the end of Assassin's Creed 2. And if you're like me and didn't play Assassin's Creed 2, the first couple of minutes are confusing as hell. They do a nice little recap of what happened in the last game to sort of catch you up a little, but it's still like, I don't know what's going on, there's all these terms and stuff, it's, it's a pretty like, large narrative to sort of condense in like a two minute video. But if you show a little patience and sit through all this weird crap that you don't understand, eventually you become Ezio, this guy in the Renaissance who is an assassin. Apparently in the last game you spent the entire time like, building up your forces, and in this game, in the first five minutes, you lose everything! So now penniless and without all those awesome equipment that you got in the last game, Ezio ventures off into Rome to sort of, I guess, kill the Pope or something? I don't know. Oh, that's a really bad idea. The main driving force of this game is trying to undermine this sort of powerful family that's taken over Rome and, and is in league with the Pope, while also trying to recruit more assassins into the Brotherhood. Along the way, you make a lot of really interesting allies and quite a few interesting enemies. But the most important part is the city of Rome. Assassin's Creed Brotherhood has done a great job of sort of rendering this entire, like, Renaissance-esque city that you can basically run around and do anything you want in. There's all kinds of different areas and plenty of places to explore and all kinds of crazy side quests that you can do along with the main story campaign. Oh, no. Bad idea. Bad idea. It really highlights one of the things I loved about the first Assassin's Creed. The open world. I've always been a fan of stealth action games, but even the really big, you know, Splinter Cells and Metal Gears have really linear paths that you have to take. You know, there's, there's the sneaky path and then there's the shoot 'em up path. But in Assassin's Creed, because it's a big open sandbox world, you're free to accomplish your tasks just about any way you can think of. The stealth mechanic is actually really unique to the stealth action franchise. Instead of using, like, active camo or hiding in shadows, you actually hide in plain sight. You stand in the middle of a large group of people and nobody can see you, you stalk people from the rooftops, you hide in bales of hay, you can even hire, like, courtesans to distract the guards so you can sneak in someplace. And there's also a ton of different weapons that all sort of feel like they fit specific purposes. God, this is a terrible idea. Besides running around and assassinating people, there's plenty of other stuff to do in this large open city. You can renovate different shops and real estate throughout the land to increase the money you get. You can then use that money to buy new weapons and upgrades and even, you know, rebuild parts of the city so people like you more. You can even start recruiting people to the Brotherhood. Then you can use them to attack your targets or send them off around the world to complete missions to get money for you. Uh. <coughs> They even added a multiplayer mode so you can test your skills against real people and have lots more replay value. The concept is simple enough. You're an assassin and it tells you, hey, assassinate this guy. But at the same time, somebody's trying to kill you. Playing against real people does add a, a whole new element to the stealth part, but it feels kind of simplistic sometimes because all you really do is run up to the guy and hit the one button, and there's very little you can do to stop him. But overall, with the single-player campaign and the multiplayer element, it's a really great package. Fans of the genre will certainly find something interesting in it, and will get a lot of replay value out of it. It's not a perfect game, but it's really good and well worth the money if you're a fan of it. Oh, uh, so there you have it. Assassin's Creed Brotherhood. 
Ah, oh, it's, it's, it's a lot of fun. It's uh, certainly worth buying if you're a fan of stealth action or just Assassin's Creed. It's, it's really good. Uh, it's got a lot of cool stealth and uh, the multiplayer is fun. You'll excuse me, I need to go to a hospital now. Ugh.